And we are live. We are live. So welcome to it. Another day of us having, you know, some real conversations, just unpacking vaccines, obviously to address issues around anti-vaccine and, and vaccine hesitancy. We started with our first uh, conversation of me just sharing my personal vaccine journey and how I was scared and I did it anyways and I'm nursing. Um, and then we said, let's invite some experts to get the solidarity fund so that we can ask some questions because I'm not a medical professional, I'm not a doctor, um, that it doesn't make sense for me to answer these questions. Last week, we're speaking to a virologist who uh, just gave us some information around some of the misinformation and, you know, the fears and adverse reactions and symptoms that happen when you get a vaccine jab or double, depending which one you're doing. I did the Pfizer. Um, and as, as I've already shared with my experience, I just had a bit of a sore arm. So I didn't get ill, thank goodness, because I cannot afford to get ill at the moment. But e even so, I was uh, prepared to get ill because it was so important and worth it to me. So today, we are speaking ar around COVID-19 vaccines and pregnancy, and we will extend the conversation to other things so that we can address all of the questions that you might have. And a lot of people, when we were speaking about the vaccine and pregnancy, uh, were saying to me, oh my gosh, how did you do it with you nursing? How did you do blah, blah, blah? And I was like, let's actually get somebody to have a conversation with. So feel free to DM any of your questions or put your questions up. I'll make sure that I go through them. The doctor will be joining us in a little bit, Dr. Sangla, um, who is actually out in the UK at the moment, and we're going to have a chat with him. I'm seeing your messages. Neo, the author, I see you. Kuzo, I see you. Um... Wandi, I see you. Marcel, I see you. So thank you so much for coming through. And let's let's have a real. And when I say real, I mean I'm not going to be sugarcoating that. Oh, this was so fun. This is awesome. Just go and get the jab. I'm like, let's sit. Let's interrogate. Let's not judge one another. Let's unpack this. So, what I'd like to do now, uh, I'm waiting for the doctor. I see you, doctor, but I need you to request to come through let's see let's get doctor okay so to join us and let's see let's get doctor to come through hi doctor good evening i told you i was going to struggle technologically <laughs> I did but you're you. here so you didn't struggle <laughs> according to me you're here <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are you sorted? Are you comfortable? Yeah, I'm sorted. I'm comfortable. Everything's sorted. In a rush, but all done. And I know you just came from being on call. Yes, uh, just a normal work day. But unfortunately, yes. because of COVID, now it's been a routine for about two years that you get home, take everything off, jump in the shower before you interact with anyone. <laughs> Which, which is the safe thing to do, really, especially in your profession and the fact that you're a little bit more exposed than everybody yes. else. So while we are there, doctor, you know, I believe in us getting to know each other and everybody that's joined us to get to know you too. Chat to us about what it is you do and why it is um, you are a, a voice of understanding and credibility when it comes to what we're going to be talking about, which is COVID-19 vaccines and pregnancy and will extend that to other things okay thank you now this happened by accident in a way because on the twitter timeline i didn't say i'm a doctor i was just a mm. person who's lol and just blowing off some steam basically yeah so when covid started and the pandemic became a problem i felt that it is imperative upon me to not to educate but to share my experience and say what I think should be. So that's yes. when I started posting things that are medical oriented and people, people started getting shocked mm. that I'm actually a doctor because they thought I was a journalist, a spy, and other things. As long as you weren't bullying people on Twitter. <laughs> no, don't do that. Some will say okay. I'm a troll, but I will dispute <laughs> 
<laughs> no trolls allowed. Okay, okay. So you are a medical doctor, and you've obviously got a, 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 a quite a bit of experience, and you can be an authority when we are speaking around the vaccine. Yes, I went to, now I'm old school. I voted in 94. So some of my language will be from back then. So I yes. went to the University of Natal. Yes. So it's got a new name now. And mm. it's moved uh, premises as well. I qualified in 95. And then I went to Port Elizabeth. You guys now call it Kabeha to do my mm. internship. And I opened a practice in Motherwell. Practice in... GP land for a while and then I just decided I needed something different so I came yeah. to the UK. So I'm working in the NHS which with the pandemic has become a very how am I going to put it I, it found me in the right place Yeah, because yeah. I was able to see what we are, what's happening here and mm. then try and be as loud as possible for South Africa to hear what is coming. Because in the beginning, we were about three months, South Africa was three months behind the UK. So we were able to say, hang on, look, you're going to be seeing this. You're going to be seeing that. Mm. Careful, do this, do, don't do that. And we are still, unfortunately, in that space because at the moment, I've had my booster. I've had my two shots as well, like you, Pfizer. Yeah. Uh, COVID on the 4th of December. Mm. I was asymptomatic. It was just because we were screening the ward because there were patients and staff getting positive. So we just, mm. so I was positive in that way, but I was asymptomatic. And then after mm. 30 days of that, we started in December. I got my first jab, second. And when the booster started, I got mine first week because I'm mm. frontline. So we, what we are going to be talking about is something that we have traversed. Mm. Mm. And so, I mean, when you when you say, and I think it's important what you mentioned about, you know, South Africa being three months behind, um, and some of us, you know, will already know, you know, the challenges that we faced with government and us getting ahead of where we are. But what are the the other main reasons that we are still behind? Okay. We are behind because, first and foremost, testing is, is expensive. Mm. Now, people will say it's a free in private, but accessibility becomes a major problem. And with COVID, unfortunately, if you test today, it's imperative you get the results tomorrow at the latest. Mm. Because the next day, it's too late. So testing at 800 rand, which was brought down, but it's still very expensive. Now, mm. test, track, and trace. So you don't just test. You track, you trace. Mm. If you don't do that, you miss the boat because the person, by the time they get their results, they've interacted with so many people, you, you, you just can't catch up. And mm. unfortunately, as citizens of South Africa, a country that I love, one of my friends said we are a lawless society. Mm. So laws and regulations will be put out there, but we don't follow them. Mm. I'll make an example. During lockdown here, the nightclubs were closed. There was no situation whereby you've got a bar, a pub, or a nightclub that is operating. Everyone adhered to lockdown. But, but that is too prompt because it goes with the government funding something called a fellow scheme, but we don't need to go there. But the citizens mm. need to follow that. You might not agree with them. You might disagree with them. But how many of us have lived through a pandemic? We were mm. not around during the Spanish flu. I don't know how many of your followers were around during the Spanish flu, but I wasn't. So I don't know. Mm. The only pandemic I know is the one I'm living. Yeah. So if the WHO says this is what needs to be done, then that is what I follow because they are ahead. They are the, the, the regulation authority. So I'm not going to doubt and question what the World Health Organization is saying should happen. I'm glad you said that, doctor, because I was about to say to you, please be mindful when we talk that all acronyms must be assumed to not be known. All right. So yeah. WHO, World Health Organization, and obviously they are the body that we listen to 
in terms of they're the ones that told us actually this is officially a pandemic and we follow it, it, all of the guidelines. By the way, they were late, by the way, but they finally got there. Keep yes, telling. yes. Now, our other shortfall, sorry, has been the delay in starting vaccination. Mm. Because vaccination started mid-May. People will tell you about an inflammation thing, but the vaccination for the population started in mid-May. Yeah. We were late. But by that time, we'd lost a lot of ground. And that has been shown in the number of deaths that were happening in the third wave. Because by the time the third wave hit in the UK, I think we we're at about 70% fully vaccinated. Yeah. So what that translates to is you will get infected, but you will not get as sick, meaning that you need hospitalization. Yes. That is the key thing. So that then cuts the chain between infection and death. Mm. That then allowed the government to say, now we're going to go parallel with the economy. Mm. We are going to open the economy. So up until July, the deaths were less than 10%, 10, 10 sorry, and the numbers were very low. But mm. if you looked at it during the Euros, that's when they started to open. Mm. And then the numbers skyrocketed. But yeah. what we were not seeing is being overwhelmed in hospital with COVID patients. We were seeing patients who are COVID positive, which is, let me explain. COVID positive patient will come to hospital for something else and get tested because we test every patient that walks through the door. It's, it's and, protocol, yeah. And then you find that so-and-so is positive, but they've come for something else. Yeah. And that gets sorted and they finish the isolation and they go home because they were not sick with COVID. They were just mm. COVID positive. But you find that if if you've not vaccinated enough, which I think as of two days ago, South Africa, we, we were at 28.8%. Mm. Let me repeat, 28.8%. Mm. So if you're at that level, people will tend to be sick with COVID when they get infected. Mm. And that leads to hospitalization, that leads to death. And we are crying as South Africans for the economy. We, we are lambasting the government for not to lock down don't lock down the economy, the economy, the economy. But for the economy to function and be sustained, we as a citizens need to behave. Mm, mm, the vaccines mm. are available. There is no lockdown at the moment. But when the fourth mm. wave hits, not, mind you, not if, when, when the fourth wave yeah. hits, the government will say lockdown. And the citizens are going to complain. Why are you locking yeah. down? but we are still at 28% vaccination. Because if you don't yeah. lock down, for example, if, if you are fully vaccinated, like a, a sizable amount of the population, if you do get infected as a person who's working, you will isolate for 10 days, Yeah. go back to work. So you are always going back to the economy. But if you are not vaccinated, you then get sick, get sick for long, need hospitalization, mm and you are out of circulation for longer. And the economy mm. suffers. And unfortunately, the entertainment industry, travel, those mm. are the sectors that we are affected the most mm. because other sectors need to function, but you, you can't open everything up. So you've got to be selective. But if we work together as one, like Jacinda Arden is doing in New Zealand, mm. we will be able to get out of this. So and I, I think, I think, and let, let me play a devil's advocate here, doctor. I mean, realistically, the people have different fears. There are some people who are not vaccinating for the simple reason that they're afraid of a needle. You know, I want us to hone in on women who are pregnant. There has, there have been, you know, uh, there, there's been a lot of confusion around pregnant women and them being able to vaccinate because of the fear that is going to do something to their child. So let's jump straight into that part of the conversation. What is it that we know for a fact around vaccines and pregnancy? Okay, let me see how I'm gonna tackle this. When you deliver a baby and you walk out of hospital, how many vaccines has a child had at that time? A few. One? Yeah. Now, they will then have up until age 14, I think. Mm. So, the question... You, oh, that, sorry, you mean up until? Just repeat that age again? Age 14. 
age 14. Yes, yes. Now, when you then go register that child in school, you will be mm. asked for something by the principal or the admin department. I think it's called a vaccination record, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes. yes. Now, I then get confused in that we are now in a pandemic. Mm. We are talking about COVID vaccine. I always want to bring the conversation back to vaccines, not COVID vaccine. Mm. Because vaccines the question, in general. Exactly. Because the question being asked is, is the vaccine safe for my child? But, when but, but before the- we get to that part, dog, before the child's been born, you know, I, I, my, my baby's five months old. I still am probably fresh with some pregnancy hormones. I understand <laughs> the added emotions that go on top of the fears, right? Mm-hmm. So for the woman who is carrying and is concerned that the vaccine might do something to her baby while she's incubating and possibly facing other pregnancy challenges, as I was, I was facing other pregnancy challenges and was extremely nervous. I was a first time mother to that woman. Why is it important? Because she is still housing this little being. Now, now what do we know? That is important for that mother for one reason and one reason only. She is going to get sicker in the third trimester mm. with COVID. Which as, then, as in if she, as in if if she gets not COVID, vaccinated. Yeah, if she gets COVID. She will get more sick in, in, more in sick third trimester. In the okay. She might end up dying mm. and be able to deliver the baby depending on what gestational period, that is at what stage of pregnancy she is, or mm. the could be mother and child death as a result of COVID. Mm. But what has not been seen thus far is a vaccinated mother who's pregnant developing adverse effects and mortality, that is death due to the COVID vaccine. So Mm. the vaccine to the pregnant mother is protective. What does the vaccine... Okay, and and I think... You've, you've touched on the big scary one, which is death, right? Mm. Is there a possibility that in a person's mind, this vaccine is going to change your child's genetics? They might be born unhealthy. They might be born, who knows, an alien. Now, you know, help, help me, us with those fears. Let me go back to how I started. Mm. You've got these fears that the vaccine will do this to my child. You then mm. deliver the child and allow the nurses and the medical profession to vaccinate the child. Mm. So where have the fear is gone? Mm. Because I, I did, uh, when this started, because you'll find I'm very vocal, and they did explain that mm. I was vocal at the start of because of this. I wrote a column about vaccines in general. And yes. I stopped exactly at your anxiety as a, as a pregnant mother. That You are anxious about a COVID vaccine during a pandemic, which is the only thing that we've got in terms of Mm. medical, except for the adverse, the non-pharmaceutical and the lockdowns. That's the only thing we've got at the moment. There is Mm. no pill we can take now. Forget what Meg is doing because that's something that's in the pipeline there. But as of now, vaccination Mm. is the only thing. So you've got this. You don't want to take it, but you vaccinate your child. You produce the vaccination record when you take your child to school. If you go to a yellow fever endemic area, you go to the embassy, they say you want a visa, this is what you need. Go to the travel clinic and get the shot. Mm. You go. Because you're not going to get on that plane. Yeah. So we then come with all these other things because it's a COVID vaccine. That's why I want to bring it to the fact that it's a vaccine. Just like all the other vaccines that have been there for many years. Mm, mm. And this one is so important because we are in a pandemic. Yeah. Do you think that a lot of the fears come from the challenges that are being faced by government administering and other government issues, as in there's a general lack of trust between the public and anything government has to do? I'll say no. 
because mm. those people who've got that lack of trust have got a BCG scar here. They've got children who go to school. They travel to yellow fever endemic areas. They know the yellow card. So what's the difference? The difference is this one came yesterday. We don't I, know. It's no, it didn't. We're scared. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for going. It didn't come yesterday. That's a misconception that people have got. Well, we, we heard about it yesterday. <laughs> no. Rukula Maobani, Jiggy Jiggy, there's a vaccine. <laughs> no. What, what's been happening is because you've got uh, SARS and MERS, so those are the ones that came before, the structure has been in place. So the virologists and the scientists have been in development trying to develop a vaccine because these viruses are not new. This one is mm. new, it's novel because it's a, it's a new generation, but they have been there. Let, let, let me take, take it this way. For example, if you watch Formula One or the car industry per se, Mercedes-Benz, my team, will have the car. Then you've got the, the power unit. Mm you keep putting things in the power unit depending on what the FIA regulations are. So if Red Bull are killing you, you come up with something else that drops the suspension so that it gives you more speed on straights. Mm. So is that a new car? It's not a new no, car. No, it's not. It's a Mercedes-Benz, Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton were driving last year. But because of the rules for this year or the following year, you've got to make modifications mm. that is the only difference so the mrna technology is not new mm. that is the thing that unfortunately we've got to respond to almost at every interaction about this it's not new i have to be honest i mean when i whenever i encounter somebody who says i don't know what's what's in the vaccine mm. you know i respond by saying do you know what's in Pernado? Do you Thank know you. <laughs> what's in mid lemon, but you drink it anyways. Thank and you. maybe because of familiarity, right? Mm. So what do you think could be done? And at the same time, agreeing with what you're saying, when you, when you know you need to take your child to the clinic or you need to go to the doctor to, I mean, the first thing that my guy did when we confirmed I'm pregnant, he took out and jabbed me and said, this is for X, Y, and Z. I didn't question... <laughs> I think because I just was like, I right, okay, you know, like <laughs> give me the thing, you know. So I'm trying to still just unpack what it is about this particular vaccine and the timing that we are so fearful. Um, and maybe, you know, even as as pregnant women being hyper alert that something's gonna happen to my child. Maybe mm. instead of us having the conversation to say, but you do it with other things. What does it, what actually happens in your body when you take that vaccine and you're housing a baby? What does it do good for the baby? What good does it do okay. for the baby? Excuse me. Let me start with the last part. The good it does for the baby, it protects the mother in the third trimester because that is where she's more at risk of, of being more ill with COVID. So mm. the baby will then have a mother. That one is sorted. Put that aside. You put that so deep. <laughs> <laughs> the baby will have a mother. <laughs> it's, a simple, yeah. it's as simple as that. The baby will have a mother. Yeah. But if yeah. it goes the other way, see, this is what I always try to explain. You don't know how you will feel, how ill you will be when you've got COVID. That is the, yeah. the one thing that people tend to be missing. And in the beginning, if you remember, we were people were focusing on 1%, 2% mortality rate. But now, everyone knows someone who's died of COVID. Mm. That is how bad it has been. So, mm. what it will do for the baby is give the baby a mother, number one. Number two, with you, what it does, here's how I explain it. If you are a detective, you're looking for a criminal, mm. you take something that the criminal was wearing, you mm. give it to the dog, the dog will sniff it, and then you send the dog to hunt. So mm. the dog is hunting the scent mm. of the victim, of the person that you're looking for. So what the vaccine does, it 
trains your body to be able to detect when the virus enters the body. Now, going further, just a little bit technical, but not too much. The virus has got something called a spike protein. Mm. Now, when it enters in your body, it looks for something called an ACE receptor to bind into. So once it binds there, it then enters the body. When mm. it enters the body, it replicates, it multiplies. That's mm. what we call the viral load. So that is what it mm. does. So these vaccines, what they are doing, they are replicating the spike protein of the of the vaccine of the virus, meaning there is no active virus. So, so your it's, body it's, is, it's mimicking the real virus that to way, prepare that your body so that come time you get the real virus, it's already done the things. You're not starting from scratch. You're already ahead. Mm, mm, now, let mm. me take it further. Thank you. Let me take it further. So when you are then vaccinated and the vaccine enters, I, I mentioned viral load. Let's say, for example, you get infected and 75% mm. of the virus is killed off. Mm. So all you are fighting as a vaccinated person is 25%. Mm. And you are not starting from scratch because you've already destroyed 75. You then yes. develop, you, you get antibodies, the soldiers of the body that kill off mm. the, the, the virus. And they also mm. make more antibodies. Yes. That is how it protects you. So that, that takes care of this misconception that people have that when you're vaccinated, why are you getting infected? Mm, mm. Because with all the other conditions that we've got a vaccine for, TB is what a vaccine, but TB hospitals are everywhere. It's the same yes. thing. But it's giving you that fighting chance to be able to deal with it when you get. But if you are not vaccinated and you get the same amount of viral load, you're not killing off that 75% because you're not vaccinated. Mm. So your viral load then becomes more. What that then means is you get sicker. It takes you a long time to recover. You might need something called a hospital. Now, mm. when COVID, when there's a wave, the way it is so difficult to get a bed. Now, I know it's sitting here because I've got to make calls sometimes and make messages looking for beds for people. Mm. That's how bad. And we say, when your oxygen level drops below 92, that's when you should go into hospital so that you get supported with oxygen. But during a wave, hospitals don't take people with saturations over 90. Mm. So you're on the back foot already because if you're saturating in the 80s, you need more oxygen. So, but by that time, the damage is being done already mm. because you don't know what you're saturating. And that's another thing. You need to know the saturation so that you can act quicker. But you can't act quicker when beds are at the premium. If the hospital can't take you above 90, you left your own devices. But if they take you at 85, you are even worse off. So it might take you longer to recover and respond. Mm. And then don't even get me started on ICU beds. So let's leave that on the side. So that is the problem. So if you are vaccinated, chances of you getting seriously ill are less. So you recover quicker. You then don't need the hospital. Can I, I'm going to quickly take some questions that people have asked before we continue between you and I. Uh, Vuelwa says, is it safe for breastfeeding mothers and a child? And I will be honest, many women have been asking me, is it, uh, you're, you're breastfeeding still because I've, I've been speaking out about the fact that I'm still breastfeeding. Um, and I've spoken out about the fact that I'm vaccinated and a lot of women were like, oh, what are you doing to your child? <laughs> so I'm happy now a doctor can actually speak. I did, you know, for my own assurance, go and speak to my doctor and baby's doctor to yeah. say, are we safe? But I've yes. never been able to say, go and do it, mothers, because mm -hmm. I, I, I don't have the authority to do so. So can now, you help us? Is it safe? Now, let me go back a little bit so that we can cover all of this. The vaccine is safe for a pregnant woman. That is the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. That has been adopted by the Depart National Department of Health. There is a circular out there. At any stage of pregnancy, you can have the vaccine. You can have the vaccine when you are breastfeeding. Very important. Now, this question, I'll answer it in two ways. The easy one is, 
having the vaccine and breastfeeding, you are not going to harm your child when you are when you've been vaccinated and you're breastfeeding. Breastfeeding is something that we encourage because it gives the baby antibodies. It is a healthy thing to do. And there is no harm presently regarding vaccination and breastfeeding. Now, there's something that people do, which doctors will say, don't do it when you're pregnant. The first thing you get told, don't drink alcohol. Mm. Don't smoke. We've got fetal alcohol syndrome. Mm. And there's many, many, many cases of that. But during a pandemic, what we're talking about is vaccine safety for babies. The same babies who are then going to get vaccinated after they've been delivered. Oh, you actually then are answering my other question, which was, <laughs> if, vac if I vaccinate while I'm pregnant, does it mean baby also got vaccinated? No, not vaccinated, but... We, 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 there are antibodies that get conferred to the baby as a natural process. So the baby is not going to get infected, like it's not going to get harmed by the vaccine. Yes. yes. Oh, but the baby technically, if I get vaccinated while housing baby, baby's born, at some point baby would still need a vaccine. I got you. Okay. Okay, well, you that, answered my other yeah. question. Continue, doctor. <laughs> so... It's those things that confuse me regarding COVID and the vaccine because, as I was saying, fetal alcohol syndrome, people are drinking while pregnant, but they're not going to take the vaccine. People are snorting cocaine, but they're not going to take the vaccine. Doing illicit drugs, but they're not going to take the vaccine. Doesn't make sense. Drinking Panado, not knowing what's Panado in it. is a safe. I, I will tablet. always use the Panado example. Safest tablet during pregnancy, but... In terms of ingredients, we have never interrogated drugs the way that we're doing with this vaccine. In, like you've already alluded to it with ingredients. And you've already said nicely, what's in Panado? How is the process of making Panado? But we want to know the process of this one during a pandemic, this one. Can I actually take it a step further? Mm -hmm. So the other thing that I was saying is, let's say you are not at ease because you don't know what's in the vaccine. Cool, we hear you. But what can a scientist tell you that will put you at ease? Because if you're not a scientist, you won't understand. So even if a scientist took you to a lab to show you its composition, is it going to put you at ease? And the likelihood is no. no. Because whatever he's explaining is too high level for me as a layman to understand. Mm. So if a person is hesitant or anti, um, do they know in their minds what it is that they can be, you know, told that can convince them? And the yep. likelihood is no one can say anything. Yep. And the expectation of going through to get a jab without fear is also, in my view, not realistic because so many people, it's discomfort getting, getting injected with anything. And you know that there's a possibility you might be a little bit ill or be in pain or whatever the case may be. So there will be fear. That's a realistic expectation. But the fact that somebody can convince you, a scientist with all of the actual facts and explain to you the composition to say, this is what's in it. Are you, are you still going to be answered? Someone said the people who do that will always shift the goalpost. You answer this one, they bring another one. You answer this one, they break another one. And it goes back to what you've already alluded to already. You want the composition of this one, but you are hypertensive, diabetic, osteoarthritis taking, methotrexate, doxazosin, whatever it is you're taking, and you're not questioning them because you've got these comorbidities. But as mm. a person with comorbidities, you are the one who needs to get vaccinated because we have seen it. We, we, in the beginning, we were learning as we were going because we didn't know what we were dealing with. Now we are, we are a little bit wiser. We know that when you've got comorbidities, it's going to hit you hard. People without mm -hmm. comorbidities and younger people are still getting affected, but when you've got comorbidities, it's going to hit you hard. So mm -hmm. you are the one that is supposed to be taking it. Now, coming back to ingredients, I don't know how much more we can repeat it that all drugs are made. All drugs need to start from somewhere. 
So mm. all drugs have something. So why is it that this one has got to have so many problems? The first problem being it's too quick, too soon. When was it done? Okay, fine. That is sorted. mRNA is an old technology. It was just something that was already there. And by the way, governments poured money and made sure that pharmaceutical companies worked together without mm -hmm. competition to be able to produce the vaccine. That is how we got here quicker. And we were in a pandemic, so they were able to get subjects quicker. Mm -hmm. And there were many people that were around with COVID. So it was easy for subjects to be available and the testing and all of that to happen. So that is why it was quicker. So we know that. So we shift to ingredients. We're going to keep shifting. But the main important thing is we need to get the numbers up mm, mm. so and that by, by the time the next wave hits, many people are protected. Yeah. So another question coming from Dima. If you've had COVID before, does that act as a vaccine to fight it off the next time? Now, this has been topical. And I think there is a country that said in the beginning they won't they won't give priority to people who've had COVID vaccinating. Yes. But I will yes. use my example. I'll use my example. As I said, I was I, I got tested on the I, I got my results on the fourth of December. Our rollout started mid December. I was chomping at the bit. Because here we were told it's twenty eight days, that over there it's thirty days. I was chomping at the bit. On the 28th day, I'd already booked my shop. Yeah. Now, I will be more protected because, again, it's a new condition that we're dealing with. So at first, they were saying the natural antibodies will last six months. But we don't know. They might last longer, they might last less, but we don't know. The vaccine then gives you more. Mm. The second dose gives you more. And the booster gives you more. So I will say, even if you've had COVID, when you're in the period where you can get your shot, get your shot, get mm -hmm. your second dose, get your booster, whatever is available at the time, have it. Uh, another one says, I am um, taking Ciplil Vasc 10 and Ridec after giving birth for my blood pressure. Is it safe, doc? So sorry, I'm just very scared. It's a pity I can't ask a follow-up question to that person, but I will say again, comorbidities. Mm -hmm. Whether the blood pressure was pre-pregnancy or pregnancy induced, fact of the matter is it's being treated. So that's a comorbidity. So I will say simple answer, yes, get the vaccine. Unka mm. Mete uh, says, please explain the clinical term reactogenicity. Reactogenicity reactions. Now that's it. <clears throat> okay, that's a bit <laughs> clinical term. Reactogenicity. Now I want to say that person is going to when you've had the vaccine and there's reactions or interactions with other. But we, with the vaccine, this one that we've got at the moment, there has been yeah. no interactions that are linked to it, but there are reactions that happen when someone has had any sort of medication. Mm. Some expected, some unexpected, some adverse, some not. So no one needs to be worried about the fact that they're on chronic medicine for X or Y. They should go ahead anyways. There's no contraindications of that particular medication. Now, people with comorbidities are the ones that we were always fighting and shouting the hardest for in South Africa because the South African vaccination schedule did not cater for them. Everywhere else in the world, it is age, comorbidities mm. in the first line. But in South Africa, it wasn't. Comorbidities are very important, as I've explained before. When you've got COVID and you've got comorbidities, the risk of dying of severe disease is much higher in that mm. situation. Now, mm -hmm. in terms of contraindications, there hasn't been any, but the main thing that is being spoken about is something called, excuse me, anaphylaxis reaction, which is a severe shock reaction to any drug, which can happen with penicillin, which can happen with or other things. You get people that are taking something called an EpiPen, 
Like, like that, allergy reaction, basically. Get it severe allergy. allergy yeah. Yes. So those are, that's the main caution at the moment. But even there, some will say, if you get anaphylaxis with one, let's give you another, which is a different one. But it's never a no. Mm, and, and I mean, I'm glad you touched on that because obviously you won't know you're allergic to something till you have to interact have with it. it. So in the event that a person, and, and they do say to us, you must stay there for 15 minutes after so they can observe you. Yes. Do you know personally of any cases of people who've had an allergic reaction to the vaccine? And not in any way to insinuate that now that's another worry people must have. Mm. It's like, it's not, it's not a likelihood. Now, what, what, what they were saying here in the beginning was, if you are taking an EpiPen, excuse me, in the beginning they were saying no because you are likely to have a severe allergic reaction. Yeah. But I know a friend of mine who was a critical care nurse who actually had to write an indemnity and say, I'm allergic, I'm, I take an EpiPen, I want the vaccine. Mm. And nothing happened to her. So I've not had any, issue, any issues where in, in, in our hospital setting where we've had anaphylaxis, that is an allergic, severe allergic reaction. But my friend wrote a letter and indemnified everyone in that dog and said give me the vaccine now yes 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 um it's interesting because i never heard of that even though um i carry an epipen for seafood and nut allergy and i didn't hear of any red flags with regards to uh getting an allergic reaction but it's it's good that we mm. are aware but again i'm sure the cases are so low it's almost insignificant there you go thank you Okay. Uh, Unkamita says, Doc, what do you think South Africa needs to do to get more people vaccinated as much as we can? I see the University of Johannesburg is trying to make it mandatory. Is this a good thing to do? Now, UJ is trying. UCT has done it. Mm. And I think there's another one as well. And there was an SRC president, I think on ANCA a week or two ago, who was so against that and even because I think in their university, they were saying, get vaccinated, you're good. But if you're not vaccinated, you need to test twice a week at your mm. own expense. Remember, we mm. come on testing earlier on at 800 rand. So that's 1,600 a week. Wow. Or you go to the public institution where you won't get your result for three, three, four days, five days, then you're missing lectures. Mm. So personally, I will say it, I'll put my head on the block those universities are doing the right thing yeah. because they are protecting the ones that are there. They're protecting themselves and they're making sure that education continues. Because again, just like with the economy, you lose a few days of school, but you are in your dorm room or wherever, rather than being admitted and lose months of school. So you've mm -hmm. got to, as a student, make that decision yourself. It is your choice not to get vaccinated, that's fine. But the consequences of that are yours. Mm. And no one is standing in your way. Those consequences are yours. So fork out 1,600 rand and do COVID tests twice a week. Mm. Now, the first one is what can South Africa do? We are almost two years in the pandemic. At the moment, like I said, two days ago, we were at 28%. The message is there. It is being repeated. The Solidarity Fund has been at this for the longest time. They're coming up with this new, new, new campaigns now. And the main focus is get people vaccinated. That ad that they roll up your brilliant. sleeves, roll that's up that, your sleeves, and get vaccinated. That ad yeah. is brilliant. Let's get back to life. We, we, we are not going to get back to life as we know it, but we're going to get mm. back to some new form of life. So those campaigns are there. But people are not listening. And it's always a new thing, a new thing. And the people that are refusing this, I will repeat, are the ones who've got busy discuss here, who've got children at school, who travel to endemic areas of other conditions, but they vaccinate because they won't get the visa. So there has been a huge resistance to COVID passports. Mm. And the people who are, some of the people who are resistant to COVID passports will quickly show you their yellow card, which is 10 years old. 10 yeah. years, sorry, it was last. So I then 
can't match the two. It's the same thing. Your child, mm. for them to be registered in school, you need to show that they're vaccinated. Mm. Why is it difficult then to then be vaccinated to go and attend a lecture at university? Mm. No, I, I, I'm with you. I mean, for, for me personally, you're preaching to the choir and the already <laughs> converted, you know, prior to having these conversations, I had already made up my mind that I was going to vaccinate and um, I did it in fear of getting ill from the jab just because I did not at the time have capacity to be falling ill with work. And fortunately, mm -hmm. I didn't. But I do know people who got flu symptoms, who got fevers for a day or two and were fine afterwards. Um, I think, Doc, maybe share with us what are the most important things just to recap with regards to pregnancy and nursing um, for those that are just joining us now that we need to know with regards to the COVID-19 vaccine. Now, before I go this, because I'm going to forget this, you've read this a second time now. The needle this time, you will attest to it, is not painful. Remember, though, people are, the fear is worse than the actual exactly. event. <laughs> but you've been there. You've been there. It is not. Yes. Yes. It is not. I don't know whether it's a desire or whatever, but this needle is not painful. Now, going back to the question, a pregnant woman will be more ill with COVID, running the risk of a miscarriage or mm. death of the mother or death of both. So, especially in the third trimester, mm. the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynecology has said mothers and pregnant mothers and breastfeeding mothers can have the vaccine. Mm. And it is important for the protection of both. Because if you, are, if you are trying to protect your child by saying, I won't get vaccinated, then your child might lose you and be left mm. with the father or so you need to be able to rationalize it. And then you deliver the baby immediately and hand him or her over to the medical professionals who then vaccinate the child. Mm. But you don't want to get vaccinated mm. because it's, it, it, COVID vaccine is a vaccine at the end of the day. And your child needs to have MMR, influenza, BCG for TB, and all the other scheduled vaccines that they have up until they grow. Even with me as a doctor, there are, there are disciplines I can't work in if I don't have a hepatitis. I, ca I can't do the surgical rotation if I mm. don't have hepatitis, if I don't show that I've got vaccination immunity from hepatitis. And I can't work. I've got to have my HIV. I've got to have a varicella zoster for shingles and chicken pox. Mm. I've got to show all of that. And I think, I think maybe the confusion, you just got me thinking now, Doc, that maybe the confusion or, or the hesitancy is, um, you know, some vaccines that, that are taken create immunity, whereas the, this vaccine doesn't create immunity, it just cushions the blow. So no. some people also of the view of how, if I can still get it, then why? Let's Which go we Let's know go. that the... the, the the in the getting ill will be 10 times worse without let's, it. let's go play, let's dial it back a little just a bit mm. now what is the name of your tb hospital where you are of your tb hospital i'm not sure of the tb hospital in my area is there one yes so as in we don't have a covid hospital no you, get, you had a PCG vaccine. Your child yes. is a PCG vaccine. So yes. what's the point then? Yeah. So why is there a TB hospital when we've been vaccinated for TB? Mm. Mm. That is what we need to understand. Vaccines are not cures. They help your body to mount an immune response mm. to fight a disease when, when you've been infected. Mm. That's the key thing when you've been in. So you are not, not going to be infected. Let's go back to the example that I used. When you get infected, the viral load is important. So your immunity will fight whatever comes in. If there's 25% that they've not been able to destroy, that is the 25% that will attack you. But you'll be able to respond to it better. 
mm. because you've been vaccinated. But if you've not been vaccinated, you are going to be hammered by 100% of the virus. And in this condition, the viral load is the most important one because with us, the reason you saw many doctors and healthcare workers dying in the beginning is because we are exposed to more viral load. Mm. So that is why you find that the, the death rate was higher than when we didn't understand what we were going through. Mm. So mm. the vaccines, we need to be able to understand that smallpox was eradicated through the vaccine program. We're not getting as much polio now, but we're still seeing adults who had polio when they were kids, but we're not mm. seeing kids developing polio. There are parents who are refusing to take the MMR vaccine, so measles does come around. Yeah, but it's because there are people who are refusing to vaccinate. So yeah. we need to shift from this. When you've been vaccinated, why are you getting the condition? No, you're getting the condition because your body is being taught to fight it when you get it. Mm. So that is why you still admit people to TB hospitals even today, and yet every child gets a PCG. Mm. I think you've ex explained it quite extensively and you've used such practical examples uh, for it to make sense. Do you have any final words, doctor, just around pregnancy, nursing and the vaccine and anything else that we've touched on tonight? Thank you for availing yourself, using your story so that people can see a person who has yeah. gone through the journey and not say there's no one that I know. It's very important, and we don't take that lightly. So thank you very much for that. Number two, the colleges, obstetrics and gynecologists, are advocating for patients to be vaccinated. There's a webinar I attended, I think, in August. Those gynecologists were even saying, let's use the antenatal clinics because we don't wait for the mothers to come to us for mm. vaccination. When they come for regular clinics, antenatal clinic, like the pregnant people do, not the press conference that you watch today, because there's no record of an antenatal visit in the mm. Tembisa 10. But normal mm. pregnancies where... <laughs> you had to go there, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so in a normal pregnancy, you will get... Yes, so scared. <laughs> yeah. Visit. So they were saying in those visits, let's vaccinate the women there. Let's go after them and vaccinate. Yeah. Them. So these are the these are obstetricians saying that. And it's their discipline. And the reason it is so important is that they've seen mothers in the third trimester who's got COVID succumbing very badly due to the COVID. Yeah. Not any effects of being vaccinated causing any Thing to the pregnancy and the child. And breastfeeding, as you've already mentioned, that can be done safely as well during breastfeeding. And as a nation, we need to be able to take responsibility and stand up and say, what have I done? Now, yeah. we are going to have a lockdown in South Africa. We are going to have a lockdown in South Africa. When that happens, the You mean with are... regards to the fourth wave? Yes. Yeah. When that happens, the citizens are going to be pointing fingers at the president. But the president said it a long time ago, it's in your hands. Now, we've got this tendency as people to conform to the lowest denominator in terms of regulations. No way in level one. No way in level whatever. No way in level. Take responsibility and say, even though we're in level one, this is what I'm going to do. I'll give you an, another example. I'm, I apologize. I talk too much. I'll give you another example. I stay... You have two minutes, doctor. You have two minutes. Just across the road. <laughs> just across the road mm. from Old Trafford, where Manchester United play. I've got a season ticket. This season, we were given an option. Do you want to renew or suspend? I chose suspend. Mm. Because I'm not going to sit in a 70,000 seater stadium. Come back home and go to work. So... Me going to work is enough exposure for my family. Mm. So I've got to limit it. So even though it's allowed, but I've taken a personal decision not to do it. Yeah. So we need to be able to do that because we're trying to get ourselves out of this. 
Mm. And the South African economy will suffer much more than the rest of the world because mm. of how it is skewed towards let's not politics. Yeah, yeah. No, I've got you. I think we've covered it all, Doctor, and I've tried to cover as many of the questions as possible. Um, thank you so much for chatting to us. And, you know, let's hope that we all can continue to roll up our sleeves and vaccinate. Again, I'm going to reiterate, I was afraid when I did it, but I did it anyways. Here I am, fully vaccinated, waiting for an op uh, opportunity to get my booster. Boost. And you. I am breastfeeding and me and baby are okay. So I hope that can encourage everybody else. And again, if you're still saying what's in it, uh, my response will be what will satisfy you, what will answer you, what can one show you in terms of composition mm -hmm. that will satisfy you to say, okay, great, I'm going ahead. Uh, doctor, thank you so much. And to everybody, again, uh, thank you to Solidarity Fund, man, for, for bringing the experts on board, for pushing this campaign. We really want life to go back to normal. Like, I, I, you know, I have what they call a pandemic baby, and I want him to, like, have social <laughs> skills and know what people are like outside. I want us to be able to go outside and interact. And, yes, we are looking at a new normal, but may we please return to some sense Something. of normalcy without the stringent how we are living. And I look forward to that. Doctor, again, thank you so, so much. And all of the best. Thanks, Thanks for having thank me. Thank you. To everybody else, I will see you guys next week. Uh, and we'll be speaking to another medical professional around the same thing. So yeah, thank you for joining us.